for a wall of thanks for those people who have done a lot for this camp and the scouts and scouters who use it and have used it over the decades. This was built as a small way of saying thank you. The names on the wall have been proposed by and voted on by the members of this organization. And if you know of anyone who you think should be on that wall, we encourage you to submit them, to submit their names and any information you have about their contributions to Cashlot to the Alumni Association so that we can include them in our next ballot. There's more information about that on our website. And we really, really hope that you will come up with some people to, uh, to submit, to nominate. We would love to get more nominations for our wall. So today, to start our induction, we'd like to recognize a few people. Uh, we have a few people whose names are up there in gleaming steel who are with us today. Mr. Larry Harney. <clears throat> Mr. Ed Tavares. And Mr. Vic Sylvia. We'd also like to recognize some members and members of our Cash Lot family, not just our association, but our Cash Lot family, who are no longer with us. Ed Spencer passed away this year, who is also honored on our wall. Other members who have passed away in the past year, Conrad Russo, Mo Menard, Charlie Prefontaine, Bill Ashworth, and Robin Canberra, all of which will be missed by those of us who have grown up here. So to read for today's nominee is Mr. Vic Sylvia. I have the honor of reading for on your best vote. Um, and I'm going to read from the program, and then I've got a few other things I like to throw in. Uh, our honoree graded the Bethesda Regional Vocational Technical High School, and its students have been quite quiet service partners of Camp Cashlot for many years, going back at least as far as the restoration period following the fire in 1964. In the first few years after the fire, students and instructors at the school assisted in the construction of the storage building, the old maintenance shed, or the maintenance shed, the cook's cabin, kitchen equipment, doors, miscellaneous other building parts, 80 tent cradles, 24 platform sections to be used in our campsites. They also were involved in drawing up plans for the, Ray the Raymond F. Koval All Faiths Memorial Chapel, including providing the reference plan set sets used in sending that project out to bid. Letters from Scott Executive Ken Liberty in 1969 thanked the school for assistance building the prefab trusses for the ranger's cabin, 10 tables with benches for the dining hall, and many other good turns performed for scouting over the years. The school also did the pre-cutting for and partial prefabrication of the new Adirondack shelters in 1970 and constructed many picnic tables both in the early 1980s and again in 1987 after the trading post burnt down that's the second trading post, taking most of the camp's uh, picnic tables with it. They worked on the Health Lodge expansion in the late 1980s and built new tables for use in the 21 Club in the same time frame. More recently, students at the school have helped repair the ammo carrier with the help of Mr. Henry DeGrace, wherever he is. Zoom it in, right in front of you. Oh, Chico, right there. Um, um, on, the, on the ammo carrier. Um, and have been doing the cutting and engraving of the steel plaques 
for the Wall of Fame since its inception. With this long history of service, the school representing its students, faculty, and other staff is very deserving of a spot on the Wall of Fame. And according to all our membership, they were, they were voted in this year pretty well. You know, although we only had one ballot, one person on a ballot, but that was good. <laughs> My remembrances of New Bedford vote go back to Mr. Fred Prefontaine, who's on the wall. He was a carpentry instructor at uh, New Bedford Vogue for years, the old Vogue and the new Vogue. And he was very instrumental whenever the camping committee back in the 70s said, gee, we need this, he said, I can take care of it. And sure enough, we'd come up with the money on the council level and he'd get the kids at New Bedford Vogue to do the work. But besides the carpentry work up there, again, Chico, Mr. DeGrace, uh, we were in need to get that ammo carrier back on its feet. And Chico brought it into the shop, had his students work on it, and we were able to auction it off and raise some money for camp. So again, to Chico, thank you. I remember the, uh, the Bedford Volk, uh, while I was camping chairman, renting Tom Cullen Field and uh, doing their program, their football program out here. They did tri sessions out here, and I believe they were out here for at least a week. So they utilized that camp. They are the ones who actually seeded uh, Tom Cullen Field. Tom Cullen Field was mostly sand and dust, and they came in and they, they seeded it. Uh, we were lucky enough to have lights put around by NSTAR, and they used it at night for their football practice. Um, 1982, we had our first Klondike Derby in 1981. And uh, Ken Cabral and I uh, said, well, you know, we want to duplicate the patch, but we want to do a neckerchief. And the council said, no, no, no neckerchiefs. You don't give out neckerchiefs. You give out patches. It costs too much money. So we had a friend that worked in, uh, I believe it was Pateka, Rhode Island, and he donated this big roll of material. We brought it over to Volk, and I want to say Claudia La Abbey, but I can't be sure if she was there. Dick Labby. Dick Labby may have been there, but I think you said Sue Silva? Sue Sylvia was. Sue Sylvia. Fashion. She said, well, just drop off the material and we'll cut it. So we dropped off the material, they cut it, they stitched it. A friend by the name of uh, uh, Anthony Ferreira, known as Hambone, he silk screened it. So we were able to give out neckerchiefs for the 1982 Klondike Derby. And these are pretty rare because we only had like 220 and uh, we gave them out. But I'll sell this for the association, anybody wants to bid on it. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so they, they helped us with that. So besides helping out at camp, they did a lot of other things. I can remember at least three scout shows that we had at New Bedford Boat. We needed a location that was central for our council. New Bedford Boat said, come on, utilize our Wakanda era atrium area. We did the first year, that went over great. Second year we went back, we ended up using their gym also. So they were able to donate that to us. So, you know, Moby Dick Council didn't have to come up with the money. We also had uh, our Murabatch College. It goes on every year there. I think for the last mm -hmm. we've been about seven or eight years now, we've been doing our Murabatch College there. We've held round tables there. So besides helping out at camp, New Bedford Polk has been a partner with scouting for many, many years. Uh, we couldn't put that in the uh, nomination because, again, we're looking for contributions towards camp, but New Bedford Volk has been a great partner for scouting. And with concluding that, I'd like to ask Mr. Rick Clinton to come up, please. Rick was a member of Troop 24 in New Bedford for many years. And 46. And 46. Um, he was a camp staff for many years. He's a teacher at New Bedford Vogue, and he's also an administrator of their night program. And representing Great New Bedford Vogue Tech, it gives me great pleasure and honor in presenting Great New Bedford Vogue Tech with a place in our Wall of Fame. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, that, that's very true. Um, well, I want to thank uh, the Alumni Association, to which I am now a member of, as of today. Uh, that. Not that that was part of the reason. Um, oh, Mr. Mr. O'Brien, our superintendent and vocational, is uh, is very honored to be part of this um, part of this award. He couldn't make it tonight. He sent me, and uh, he asked my brother, who couldn't make it today either, because he knows we were in Scouts a long time. 
I didn't know all the things that we did. I mean, so Sylvia was telling me some of it. Um, I remember when we used it for football. Uh, the association between working with the community is something very important to the school and Mr. O'Brien. We're all about students, we're all about kids, and that's what, that's what Boy Scouts is. So we're, we support it very much. I know he's happy to, uh, to, to help in any way we can. Personally, I went to this camp when I was a kid, and to be able to come back as a leader and have my son, uh, who's here today, Harrison, in camp as well, this, this place has been a point to me. It's going to continue to be, and I was an alumni. We'll be back, and the, hopefully the relationship with Great New Bedford Folk Tech, in fact, I know the relationship will not end today. I want to thank everybody today. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other faculty members want to say anything before we move on? <laughs> no limelight? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that concludes our ceremony. Before we run away up to the hill to the chapel rededication, we would like to have our traditional group photo over here. So if you'd like to be part of that, we can assemble here um, in front of the wall and our, our master photographer will arrange us all in an aesthetically pleasing configuration. And then by all means, check out the wall, see the plaque, see what they look like. If you're on there, check on your plaque, make sure we didn't sneak it down on you. And then after that, we'll give everybody about 15 minutes or so and we'll, we'll reconvene at the chapel, those of you who need transport. Yeah. We will take care of that. Mm -hmm. All right? All right, so everyone come on up. You sure? Yep. Yeah.